I see you. In key scenes in both Avatar released in 2009 and in the sequel Avatar The Way of Water, characters say this to each other. I see you suggests the seeing of another person or being with depth, wisdom, compassion and connection. To see isn't merely to view, it's to behold and it's to understand. But perhaps these films are also director James Cameron's way of saying the same to nature. That he sees nature, truly sees it in all of its wonder and strangeness and power. Like the first film, The Way of Water is a soaring romanticized call for humans who are greedy, selfish, rapacious to take a pause. Because what surrounds us, the forests, the oceans, the myriad creatures within them isn't just our lifeline, it's also our spiritual salvation. When a sequel arrives 13 years after the first film, no matter how much of a blockbuster that first film was, the question is, do we still care? Cameron doesn't give us a choice. He, his co-writers Rick Jaffa and Amanda Silver, and key collaborators D.O.P. Russell Carpenter and production designers Dylan Cole and Ben Proctor, create a family drama with high stakes set in an aquatic world which is so visually resplendent that it's impossible to take it all in. The runtime of this film is a challenging 3 hours 12 minutes. And there is a stretch towards the beginning of the second hour when the narrative momentum seems to get lost in the wonder of marine life. Tentacled creatures of every kind and in every size, some in dazzling fluorescent hues, fill the frame. It is dazzling, but it's also verging on stillness. But I recommend you have patience, because it's all part of Cameron's masterful orchestration. The world building in high frame rate 3D is so stunning that it will take you a few minutes to adjust to your own reality when you exit the theatre. Protect the people! Let's get it done. The way of water fully immerses us into the world of the Navi. In the first film, the action moved back and forth between the protagonist Jake Sully's human form and his blue 10 foot tall avatar. Most of the characters, action and all of the landscape is computer generated artifice and here's the miracle, we still get deeply attached. The events take place 14 years after the events of the first film. Jake and Netiri have four children, including two teenage sons, Netiam and Loak, an eight-year-old daughter, Tuk, and an adopted teenage daughter named Kiri. Kiri is played by Sigourney Weaver, who you might remember as the empathetic scientist Dr. Grace Augustine from the first film. Kiri's parentage is a bit of a mystery, as is this instinctive connection she has with nature, all of which will presumably be unveiled in the sequels, which undoubtedly will follow. Kiri is also close to a young human boy named Spider, who is described as a stray cat. The Sullies are forced to leave their jungle home because the Sky People, aka the bad guys who were banished from Pandora in the first film, return. The family takes refuge with reef dwellers known as the Metkayena. In the first film, Naitiri had taught Jake the ways of the Navi and the ways of the forest. Here, the entire family must learn the ways of the water people. For much of the second hour, the action takes a backseat. And we get this family saga of sibling rivalry, rebellious teens and parents fumbling to do the best they can. A father protects, Jake's voiceover reminds us twice. It's what gives him meaning. We're also introduced to the Tulkun, mammoth whale-like creatures who come to play a key role. There is much to protect this family from. The formidable Colonel Miles Quaritch is back. You might ask how, since in the first film he died with these two arrows buried in his chest. Quaritch is reborn in a Navi avatar who has been implanted with the Colonel's memories, which means that this time the fight is personal. He's back for revenge, or as he says, Jake Sully's scalp. The dialogue occasionally borders on banal. The story is simple. And the humans, apart from Spider, have minimal depth. But where the writing wobbles, the visuals take over. The way of water is a testament to imagination and ingenuity. Every frame is designed to induce shock and awe. The beauty on display is startling, but it would be empty if the drama didn't provide the emotional hook. Sam Worthington as Jake, Zoe Saldana as Neytiri, Kate Winslet as Ronal, Stephen Lang as Quaritch all deliver as blue and aquamarine people. 
as he did in the first film, Cameron reproduces human emotion in CG. The Way of Water has echoes of Cameron's earlier forays into water worlds, The Abyss and Titanic. Once again, he's created a film that is a technical marvel and a crowd pleaser. I enjoyed it immensely and I think you will too. What did you guys think of The Way of Water? Did you enjoy it? Tell me in the comments below and do check out our filmmakers, Adda. We've got some incredible filmmakers there.